a lot of times we put boundaries. Um, you know, we, we talked about boundaries in past episodes mm -hmm. and we talk about, you know, setting those boundaries, having those conversations. But what about, have you guys ever put, I call it, and maybe I'm the only one who does this, but I put um, invisible boundaries that I put around on myself to help my mental health. And sometimes I have to do this when I have no choice, but there are certain people that I need to be around because of other people in my life. That makes sense. The classic, I like you, I don't really like you, but you two are mm. together. <laughs> well, yeah, it could be they're together. It could be a, a place we frequent. It could be could be family members. It could be cousins. It could be anything. Right. You know? But the reason they're there is because someone else is attached to them, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. There's there's part like, of a family dynamic or there, yes, there's something yeah. there. Have you ever heard of? I want to know if I was doing my I call myself wackadoodle sometimes, but if it gets me through something, like I put these invisible boundaries that, or mantras <laughs> in my head when I'm having these um, interactions with people that helps my mental health. What What does it look like? Yeah, I was going to say, what's an example? Like a, what's an a, example? A, like I could be around somebody who's always um, negative. It could be always negative. And I've tried the um, the approach and the boundary and I'm not somebody like that. I always like am doing, you know, the positive. I always try to spin things around. Probably sometimes you try to do that help with them like, oh, no, you know, the whole thing. But they're just that type of person that maybe just always wants to wallow in it and always yeah. converse about it and this and that. And in my mind, this is what I do. And you ready for it? So you or you need to be watching. You can't just listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to engage. There's no, there, I just become frustrated. I'm not going to engage. I'm going to allow this person to have their say. Okay. And change the subject. So I don't mm. get like pulled into that negative where it gets so like like you're feeding that negative mm, and mm. you're trying to help and they're giving you all these excuses and then you try to help some more and they give more excuses so then you get frustrated and it just like you walk away from the the conversation exhausted mm. so i just do a mm -hmm, really oh okay so how's and ba -ba 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 -ba. I might try mm. to. But don't you think that's like from just the experience of wisdom of being around so many people throughout your life that you realize if they are not, I don't want to say stuck, but if this is their view or idea or the, they want to wallow in the negative and all that, there's no point in trying to change them because they don't really want to hear your advice or hear you. They want to bring you to their side of, mm -hmm. of whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. I think it's a little bit of that and and I'm just using negative at that aspect of it, but there is there could be other traits within that per within those people that you don't agree with. So it's a way that I allow myself to be within the company of these people, but don't feel less of myself. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Because if they weren't um, associated with each other, you would actually not have that toxic or that type of energy in yeah, your life. Yeah. But because mm. of what the relationship is or the situation, you, you yeah. want at least one of them. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not even that. It's like sometimes even when I go someplace um yeah it's just called what I call invisible boundaries like and I've had this even with 
um, a client that she was going somewhere where a family member was always like an older family member and she's younger um, was always giving her advice on what she would do. And she was always like, I tried to tell her like to, she, she tried to put up those boundaries and out of respect, she was having difficulty. She put up the boundaries, but then it was getting to the point where she had to be, it was either not see the person or be downright rude. And I said to her one day, well, what if you put up the invisible boundary? And she kind of looked at me weird. And I said, why don't you put up like in your mind, this is this person's opinion. She's allowed to have the opinion. We're all allowed to have our opinions. And you can very gracefully stop her or say, thank you for that and change the subject. And she actually tried it. And she said it actually helped the visit be more um, pleasant. Mm. And little by little, the person <laughs> didn't end up having the conversation so much. And it was probably because she didn't engage back. It probably was because she felt, maybe she felt heard when the person said, well, thank you, and just continued to move on, you know? So I think sometimes a person could be afraid to have that conversation on boundaries because we've talked about how uncomfortable that can be. Hmm. But sometimes you can start mentally having that, like a mental boundary, before you have that conversation, you know, test the waters kind of. I think it, our, sorry, I think it also depends on the relationship too, right? Like if you're with a group of friends and, you know, um, you're at events or things like that, you know, you're not going to necessarily put up a talk about the boundaries you want to put up with those person, that person, because they're, they don't mean that much to you in right. the long run that you would try to create boundaries but yeah invisible boundaries I don't you think we all do that though in some way like I don't know and I just the person was having my client was having a difficulty with it and so that's we when we gave it a name she seemed to be able to mm. understand it better yeah mm. huh it's interesting. I always like I always like to uh, like in in that situation where you have like a couple and and you really care about one person, but not you know the other person is just not your cup of tea. Let's say it that way. And you um, go, why are they with that person? Well, you, well, we we do though, right? We kind of go like, I don't. Well, like, I don't judge. What's, what's that dynamic, right? Yeah. <laughs> But what I try to do is I try to I try to ask myself what there is a curiosity here about why this person is so deeply attracted to that other person. What is it that I'm not seeing? Right. I'm obviously not seeing it. Right. It's like I got to I got to find that thing. That is going to change, you know, help change that opinion. And do you ever find it? Yeah, sometimes I do. So, you know, but what it, oh, what it come does. Come on. No, do seriously, you... what? What it does is it actually makes me look at them completely differently than the way I'm looking at them. Because what it does is it gives me another set of lenses to look at because I'm not looking at it through my lens anymore and looking at the things that kind of bug me or irritate me or whatever. I'm looking at it from their perspective or what I think their perspective right. is, right? And it's like, okay. And you start looking for the good. You really do start looking for the good. And it doesn't bit, it doesn't necessarily mean they're still not going to bug you or irritate right. you or any of those kinds of things, right? right? But it does possibly help change that dynamic in that relationship that you have with that person. But a little bit on what I do also has done that also with the same people that I'm dealing with because mm -hmm. I don't walk in with that wall up. Yeah. So mm. Like physically, I just uh, it's not something that I do in a mean way. It's not something I, I do in a in a um, judgmental way. It's more giving myself permission to allow that person to be that person. And I don't have to take what they're saying personally. Right. That's a big one. Don't take things personally. <laughs> right. And that's what this was 
in my mind, I'm reminding myself, this is this person's opinion. And she or he is allowed it. Yes. And I don't have to vocalize whether I agree or disagree. And I think that's where we sometimes get in trouble because we think we have to have a rebuttal or we have to have that conversation back. And there are times when, yes, you do. There is people Mm -hmm. have crossed the line and there are issues. You do have to have that. Um, But I think there are times we would spend our time setting up boundaries and having conversations with every single person that's in our, even our significant other, because there are things that will irritate us from time to time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what, what's important enough that you can just have this invisible boundary, release it, let it go, not allow it to affect your mental health or your emotional health, whichever you choose, and then move on. Well, that's and giving I, yourself choices, right? Yeah. I was going to say, a, I think that's really important that that's been described that way because it's not people-pleasing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Just because they're pointing an uh, opinion and you don't have a rebuttal or you're putting them down or whatever doesn't mean you're people pleasing they they can have it you can take it and as soon as they walk out of the room it, it's gone it's out of your mind you don't think mm-hmm. about it. and that's another important thing i don't put this invisible boundary and then the rest of the night keep thinking about what the person right is. That's yeah the promise i've made to myself that when the conversation's over the conversation is over it's i don't even repeat it to anybody there's no need it's gone. It was that invisible ping boundary gone. Mm. Released. Let go. I think that that has a lot to do with uh, taking things personal. I think that if you can start to draw that invisible boundary and just Mm. this is this isn't about me. This is about them. And that's on them. And then this thing of what you said, Tracy, is a good point in that um, if you're attracted to a friendship relationship with one person then and they're attracted to this other person then obviously they're they have to have something good in that set that Mm. person because you like the first person so much as a friend or a family member or whatever so you should kind of open I'm gonna maybe look at that Mm, (laughs) that. that maybe that person isn't that bad Mm. I it just it's just a different perspective yeah and ultimately it helps me. Uh, so I'm the winner. I'm the winner in that situation. Yes. Right. Cause it's, you know, it's, it's difficult being with difficult people. Right. Mm. So, it, you know, it never makes us feel comfortable or good when we are with difficult people. Yeah. yeah. So, and, yeah. And I found as you age, you get more and more where you go, I don't need to put up with difficult mm. people. I do not need to surround myself with difficult people. So it's, it's a good way. It's a good uh, perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like and that. You, and you don't have to wait till you're older. No. Exactly. Yeah. Like do it now. Yeah. <laughs> it is okay. It is okay yeah. for any of it. And I think that's why I wanted to have this discussion. I think me calling it invisible boundaries and you, Tracy, finding something about that person. I don't, I think they're kind of hand in hand a little bit yeah. with it. Because I'm allowing the person to be that person. Yeah. I'm just not internally doing anything with it. It's not wrenching my stomach. It's not like giving me a headache. It's not like, (laughs) oh, shut the F up. It's It's like, really? Okay. And there are times where it forces me to listen to the person. So as I'm sitting there going, "Uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not ignoring what they're saying. It sometimes makes me listen a little bit more to what they're saying. And their point might be valid, but I don't engage in the conversation because that's where it gets into that, like, let's go down this rabbit hole aspect of things that just does not work well with my mental health or my emotional health Mm -hmm. from from past experiences with that person or with other people. Mm -hmm. It's like a trigger. 
Let's go there to trigger. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's allowed me to say, okay, then I'll say, well, what did you do about it? And they'll say, well, I had a conversation with the person. That's wonderful. So how's, bah, 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 bah. so like, let's shut it down and let's go this way. So boundaries. Yeah, it's a way. Invisible boundaries. Invisible boundaries. Yeah. An invisible fence of a dog. Don't <laughs> go any further. When and so maybe that's what it is. I'm not allowing that person to go down that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowing my mental health and my emotional health to be and physical health mm -hmm. to be affected by it. Yeah. So it's invisible. Yeah, it's invisible. awesome. Invisible mm -hmm. sense. So, viewer, have you found this helpful? Do you think you can put invisible boundaries, or as Tracy E said, look at somebody? through another person's eyes. What do you think? Comment mm -hmm. below and let us know. Hit subscribe, share this with somebody that you think it would benefit and um, make sure you hit those notifications every Wednesday. Until then, have a great day. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you as a regular member of our community.